animals. They feed us, they work for us, they guide us, and sometimes they're our loyal companions, always here to make sure we make it to another day. But besides the eggs, that juicy steak, the ploughed fields, and the invaluable cuddles that we take for granted, there are some furry creatures who made it possible for mankind to take a course in history that we otherwise would have been unable to make. Now, we can't start a list of the most amazing and important animals in science and medicine without looking at the millions of mice and monkeys who sacrificed their lives so that we could have the life-saving medicines that we have today or the billions of donkeys that had a hand in building the most magnificent structures and castles that shaped our history. For the most part, the animal world works and sacrifices for us, and they never even had names. They were swallowed up by time, never to be recognized for their hard work. But every now and then one of them takes part in something so enormous, so incomprehensibly important, that their paws and hooves are stamped in the books forever. In 1930, Ellie J was loaded onto an aeroplane and milked right there in the air. The six gallons of milk that she gave during the flight was poured into cartons and parachuted out of the plane, where spectators lined up to see who would be the lucky ones who got the sky package delivery. The public spectacle and the record-breaking feat wasn't just for entertainment purposes. The airline that arranged the Guinness World Record feat wanted to prove that it was possible and completely safe to transport animals in aeroplanes, opening up the very lucrative transport of animals across the oceans for much cheaper, less time, and therefore with much less stress to the animal. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, it was common to inject horses with diphtheria and then to inoculate children with the horse's blood. Horses are immune to the disease, and their antibodies, after breaking the disease down, was a very effective way to vaccinate people. Jim, a working horse, delivered more than seven gallons of serum in his lifetime. But that's not what makes Jim special. After poor Jimmy developed tetanus, the serum made from his blood caused the deaths of 13 children. This terrible tragedy was the reason that the FDA exists today and that we have regulatory bodies in place to ensure humanity's safety. At the height of the Cold War, Russia and the United States were in the race to get to space. And even though the USA got the first man on the moon, Russia actually got almost all of the other milestones before that. The first orbit, the first successful landing from orbit, the first explosion and loss of life. They just missed out on that final moon landing by a few months. But it was a Russian street mutt who made it all possible. That got the race going in the first place. Before anyone had ever been into orbit, the Russians had the rockets. They did the math and the engineering but they had no one to take the trip up. So they scoured the back streets of Moscow and selected the most docile and sweet-tempered stray and named her Laika. If you were hoping for a heroic return to Earth and an adoption that would allow Laika to run in the fields for the rest of her days, well, the rocket was never meant to make it back. Poor Laika was hooked onto recording equipment to see what her vitals were and how she physically fared in zero gravity. Before her trip, no one even knew if humans could withstand the alien conditions outside of Earth's gravitational force. So in 1957, Sputnik 2 launched with sweet little Laika inside of it, but Laika only made it eight hours into orbit before she died of panic and heat exhaustion. But her death at least proved that the conditions were habitable and that humans could make the trip. She was commemorated with a statue in 2008, half a century after her death. A year after Laika's deadly trip, two dogs named Strelka and Belka were the first to orbit around the Earth completely. And Laika wasn't the only animal to be commemorated by a statue in Russia. In Novosibirsk, there is a statue of a mouse knitting a strand of DNA in memory of all of the rodents who died, so that humans could understand the complexities of DNA. In October 1918, Major Charles White Whittlesey and more than 500 American troops were trapped behind enemy lines without food or ammunition. Whittlesey could not risk sending one of his men out to assure death, so they sent out pigeons. But the first two were shot down. Finally, Sher Army made it through, giving the location of 500 men who would otherwise have been massacred if she hadn't made it through. After her heroic feat, 
Cher Ami retired from military service with honours. She received the Croix de Guerre Medal for bravery, and when she died just a year later of natural causes, her body was preserved and is on display at the Smithsonian Institute as the bird who saved more soldiers than any army medic ever would in a lifetime and turned the tides of the First World War. Humans wanting to protect and preserve animals is not a new thing at all, but taking an injured or abandoned wild creature and rehabilitating them so that they can actually go back and live out their lives in their natural environment is a relatively new concept. It wasn't until Elsa the lioness was discovered as an abandoned cub in 1956 that it was even considered that a wild animal could ever go back. A game warden and his wife George and Joy Adamson took her in, raised her, and taught her how to hunt for herself. They released Elsa back into the Kenyan wilderness, and she joined a pack, hunted, and had babies just like any other lion would have under normal circumstances. Elsa proved that even the most ferocious animals could be reintroduced to their natural habitats, no matter how young they were when they were taken in. She is the reason that massive movements and organizations have sprung up since, sending millions of creatures back to their homes who would otherwise have been killed out of mercy or raised in captivity. In 1994, using DNA to solve crimes was still a new concept, and even juries and judges weren't easily convinced by the results every time. Enter the case of Shirley Duaguay, who was murdered by her abusive husband, Douglas Beamish. Police suspected the Canadian man from the start, but they had no evidence to tie him to the crime, until a bag was found in the woods, containing a jacket and sneakers covered in blood and a few strands of white cat hairs. The blood was tested and matched Shirley, but it was those cat hairs that sealed the deal. The DNA was extracted from them and tied to Beamish's pet cat Snowball, leading to the first murder in history that was solved by using the DNA of an animal. But the story doesn't end here. It's because of Snowball's contribution that laws were changed to make these kinds of convictions possible, and it also led to the general distrust of DNA evidence used in courts to abate and become more accepted. We've spoken about Dolly, the first animal to be successfully cloned before. It's not just that Dolly's birth was a remarkable achievement in science, she made it possible for us to take science fiction and turn it into a reality. The little sheep was born in 1996 in Scotland, and she had three mothers. One supplied the egg, the other the DNA, and the third carried her to term. Dolly lived to be almost seven years old. She even gave birth to a set of triplets in her lifetime, but she was wrought with medical problems since she came into this world. Dolly developed arthritis at the age of three, and at the end of her life she was diagnosed with lung cancer and had to be euthanized. From Dolly's DNA, four more clones of her were produced in 2016, 20 years after Dolly broke the media. Their names were Daisy, Debbie, Diana, and Denise, and they're still alive and healthy today. Dolly advanced stem cell research by more leaps than we can even begin to imagine, and she made it possible to reintroduce extinct species back into the world, finally giving humans a chance to right the terrible damage inflicted on the planet by our own hands. Even though many more animals of various different species have been developed since, Dolly is undoubtedly the first and the most famous of them all. Ivan Pavlov, a Russian physiologist, took a group of dogs and trained them to associate the sound of bells with treats. By measuring the saliva that their mouths excreted, even before the treat was brought out, he proved that animals could be conditioned to react by trigger sounds in 1897. This might not seem like a big deal on the face of it, but it actually changed the concept of conditional therapy and the understanding of triggers that set off psychological conditions like schizophrenia, anxiety, and depression. The way we apply therapy, raise children, teach students in school, punishments and rewards. And the whole field of behavioral psychology was built around this mind-bogglingly simple concept that Pavlov took from theory to practice, and for once, an experiment that involved an animal only required giving a fluffy test subject treats and rewards. The same cannot be said for Vladimir Demikhov and his canines. Demikhov was the living embodiment of Frankenstein's creator and Dr. Jekyll, but as cruel and insane as his experiments on his living subjects were, it is the reason that heart and lung transplants are possible today. 
Demikov wanted to prove that it was possible to transplant living organs into patients with failing livers, hearts, and kidneys, instead of creating artificial ones. He performed the first heart transplants and coronary artery bypass operations in canines. And every time he performed a new operation, his subjects would live for longer and longer, the most successful of which was a heart transplant dog that lived for seven years after the operation before it died of old age. He then turned that dial up to eleven by taking dogs, beheading them, and then surgically attaching their heads onto another living dog, creating two-headed specimens. Thankfully, they died within hours, or the heads didn't take to their new hosts. A South African doctor called Christian Barnard learned of Demikov's work and visited him twice in Russia. Then, Barnard performed the first surgical heart transplant in a human successfully in 1967. He credited Demikov's earlier experiments, calling Demivkov the true father of heart transplants. The hundreds of dogs that died on Demikov's table in the most horrible and torturous ways possible at least led to thousands more humans being saved by the vital surgeries that he proved was possible. Even his insane double-headed experiments proved that once the spinal cord was severed, a living being was almost always rendered brain-dead, furthering our understanding of the complexities of the brain and the spinal cord. It's difficult to decide if he was a monster or a genius or maybe a little bit of both. At least some of the brave animals that made our lives better today have managed to make it into the history books forever. Even if they were mostly unknowing participants, and sometimes, to their terrible detriment, to the experiments and test runs that they were put through. Now, with better technology and a better grasp of ethics and morality, so many of them needn't die for our betterment anymore. But for those that did, and the others that accidentally solved murders or stumbled into the earth-changing discoveries attached to them, we thank you, our fluffy, behooved, and always loyal companions, who are the reasons for millions upon millions of lives saved and advancements in science made since the beginning of time. Did we miss any amazing creatures in the animal kingdom who changed the course of history? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one, so don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any uploads covering the most astounding animals and get the lowdown on what livestock is best suited for your acreage. Cheers!